If a team of heavily armed Ebenezers crashed your Christmas party and threatened to end the festivities once and for all, what would you do? These sickos make the wet bandits look like Buddy and Elf, and I'm not just talking about their holiday spirit. In addition to being lifelong members of the naughty list, they've got the equipment and the manpower to pull off the holiday heist of the century, just as long as no one else gets there first. Whatever the case, they'd better watch out, cause you know who's coming to town, and he'll be dishing out a lot more than coal to all the bad guys and girls. I'm going to break down the mistakes made, what you should do, and how to beat the Grinch Squad in Violent Night. It's that time of year again, and you know what that means. Legions of red and white clad inebriates stumbling merrily between every bar in town. Here's one now. Although, judging by the way he's cracking those walnuts with his bare hands, I'd say this is no ordinary Santa crawler. And then there's the fact that he's got a gift wrapped up for the bartender's grandson. This might actually be the real deal that we're looking at. Now, I know what you're thinking, but nerd, just cause some fat drunk is handing out Christmas presents doesn't mean my parents lied about Santa being fake to cover for the fact I was too much of a little sh to get anything. And that's a fair point. There's just one thing. How do you know my grandson's name? How do you know my other grandson? Boom. Checkmate, Kringle deniers. Oh, yeah. There's also the fact that he just took off from the roof in a sleigh pulled by a team of flying ungulates. Seems like old Saint Nick is really playing fast and loose with his secret identity. Better be careful. What will all the snot-nosed brats think if your cut-rate opsec gets you got by some shadowy government organization? Let's face it. Someone out there thinks you owe them taxes. Plus, you've been violating the airspace of basically every country on Earth since before or airspace even became a thing. Whatever, all in a night's work, right? Speaking of which, is it just me, or does he seem a little burnt out on the whole traveling around the world at delivering presents for nothing in return business? Sure, keeping up with the ever-growing demands of today's youth must be exhausting, but at this point, he could probably just leaflet entire towns with Robux cards like they're about to be firebombed and call it good. You gotta work smarter, not harder. Eventually, Santa's Yuletide bender leads him to the lavished Lightstone residence, where we find our more relatable characters. Here, Jason Lightstone and his ex-wife Linda have slapped a little flex seal on their relational rift to give young Trudy some semblance of a normal holiday post-separation. Although, if that's really the goal here, they should have probably ridden and out with Linda's side, because Jason's family puts the Griswolds to shame. Let's meet them all, shall we? You gained weight. <coughs> <coughs> If I was on one of those planes, 9-11 would have ended with a bunch of terrorists skydiving over Connecticut. Yo, this is the burnt locker living that bling life. How endearing. I sure hope nothing horrible happens to all of them, especially not all at once. Of course, that only leaves the hostess and matriarch of the family, billionaire business mogul and four-letter wordsmith, Gertrude Lightstone. See, you can tell she's really materialistic by how she talks on her phone instead of greeting her loved ones. Dead giveaway. After what I can only imagine must have been the most obnoxious Christmas dinner in history, the revelers break off to unwind in various wings of the mansion. And that's when things get interesting, starting with the front gate. Hmm, a mysterious stranger with no business being out here, randomly showing up in the middle of the night. Better take my eyes off him while I use the phone, he thought, before getting shot in the head. Oh, and it only goes downhill from here. I mean, you'd think a plutocrat security detail would become suspicious when the catering staff all randomly drop what they're doing and vanish at the same time. Then again, they say you get rich off the money you don't spend. And if that's the case, it would certainly explain why these rent-a-cops react like they got hired straight out of the nearest Chuck E. Cheese. For real, at least try putting up a fight. Most of you heard the bad guys popping off ahead of time, and yet, not a single one of you manages to squeeze off so much as one round in their direction. Nothing more pathetic than dying with a full mag. At the very least, the guards on the inside should have tried reinforcing the front door, or I don't know, maybe not stand right out in the open where they could get their sh rocked by a dynamic entry. Ultimately, the primary objective is to protect the client, not the property. So as soon as the shooting started, we should have had every surviving unit fall back to the package's location and escort her to the most defensible part of the house. As for calling in backup, the attackers had their inside demand disable the landline and internet. But did anyone think to try 911 on a cell phone? Of course not. Which is why the Lightstones will be spending this Christmas at the whims of cold-blooded kids.
killers instead of ruthlessly vying for control over mommy's empire. Although, I'm sure there'll still be plenty of that. Fortunately for, well, Gertrude, there's a hidden panic room that she can use to ride this mess out comfortably. Only it seems someone already beat her to it. You can call me Mr. Scrooge. Hilarious. Get him. I'm sorry, I think what you meant to say was shoot the visibly armed man obstructing our path to safety during a home invasion. You literally just delivered this scumbag a firearm by having a man charge in like that and look at what happened. Seriously, Granny's Goon Squad is the polar opposite of trigger happy. They are straight up trigger depressed. If I had her money, I'd want my bodyguards to be like the ED-209 from Robocop bonus points if they only spoke some obscure language, so my enemies couldn't even beg for mercy. With security taken care of, the attackers begin rounding up the Whitestones and mopping up any remaining members of the household staff. I guess it's safe to say the butler wasn't in on it this time around. And where's Papa Noel when all this is unfolding? Why, he's upstairs passed out in a massage chair. God. If this is his normal pace, no wonder people stopped believing. Good thing Mr. Scrooge's henchmen aren't running subsonics. Otherwise, our hero might have slept through the entire ordeal. Yeah, things aren't looking great downstairs. Time to phase shift our way back up the chimney in GTFO. We can land at the next house over and call for help from there. Only problem is, all of Santa's binge drinking seems to be keeping him from rising to the occasion. And to make matters worse, it sounds like someone's sweeping the second floor. Hey! Oh, I don't want any trouble, okay? Oh, yeah, then why'd you try and hide behind a Christmas tree? Instead, you should have used your mid-tier demigod strength to barricade the door with furniture while you waited on your biotics to cool down. For real, you saw what was going on downstairs. You're lucky he didn't dome slice you the second you popped out. Speaking of which, Uncle Scrooge made it expressly clear that they were to shoot on sight anyone who wasn't a member of the Lightstone family, so I guess this moron must have skipped the mission brief. They should have all known ahead of time what each member of the family looked like to avoid any full metal oopsies. Of course, had her nameless henchman done what he was told to do, this whole episode would be a lot shorter. As it turns out, Saint Nick isn't one to get pushed around. I know it's Christmas and everything, but you gotta believe the last thing this guy expected going into this was getting his kicked by a living holiday mascot. That said, you don't have to believe in Santa Claus to know sending your guys to clear a giant mansion by themselves is how you wind up with a full-blown diehard situation. Dude was just asking to get iced. Unfortunately, our jolly old action hero is a far cry from Jack Reacher, and while he may have come out on top, it wasn't before the goon's panic fire could drive away his deer-powered Xville. Looks like we're gonna be hoofing it from here on out. Well, better get going. These six presents for all the kids that still actually believe in Santa Claus aren't gonna deliver themselves. Nah, just kidding. You know he's gotta have a last minute change of heart after seeing young Trudy and family being held hostage. I guess this must be the first horrific event to ever take place on Christmas Eve. Honestly, dude, I think your best bet for helping these folks would be to fish out an iPhone out of that sack of yours and dial up the professionals. Sure, you managed to waste one of these fools, but barely. You have absolutely no idea where the rest are, how many there are, and what they might be packing. I mean, you didn't even think to frisk the dead one's corpse for weapons or any useful items. That drop-dead gorgeous HK-416C of his might have stayed up top, but even a combat knife would be better than going back in empty-handed. However, while Santa might not have the bad guy's level of equipment or training, there's one thing he does have they could never possibly imagine, and that's a bottomless bag of tricks from which he could draw any number of assorted playthings. Sure, most of them are going to be cheap plastic garbage, but you never know until you try. And there's some pretty f***ed up rug rats out there. Whatever he chooses, he'd better do it quick, because here comes yet another lone sentry whose name I don't even care to look up. Really, Santa? Friggin' Annabelle is what you're going with. Might want to keep digging. I know for a fact there was at least one good little boy out there who asked for a loaded KP-15 this holiday season. Not that it'd make a difference, as even after he manages to disarm the hoser, he still fails to grasp the most intuitive thumb safety that ever existed. Oh, well, at least he can fall back on his brawler skills to carry him through the rest of the encounter. And might I say, the big man delivers a banger of a coup de gras this time around. <laughs> 
Nothing says Merry Christmas like the smell of burning human skin. Smells like victory. Okay, that was cool and all, but once again, we barely made it out alive. And this time, we even sustained a few injuries in the process. If we're gonna take out the rest of these psychos, we're gonna have to think outside the box and take full advantage of our unique loadout. First of all, I'm taking the dead man's carbine and equipment and carrying it with me. However, as we work our way through the naughty list, we can stash any other weapons we find in our magic bag fallout style. And until we're strapped up like a big fat drunk disgruntled Yuletide Rambo. And speaking of Santa's sack, that gives me an idea. Let's rewind back to this last fight for a second. You see how he reaches his whole arm into the bag while the henchman is holding it? Well, if it truly is bottomless, then who's to say we couldn't sneak up on these guys and cast it over them head first, leaving them trapped in a limbo-like pocket dimension for us to haul them back to the North Pole. From there, we could put them to work in the gingerbread mines, where they would toil ceaselessly without rest until their withering bodies inevitably succumbed to the freezing temperatures and inhumane conditions. And then we feed them to the reindeer. Wait a minute, what was I talking about? Oh, right, right. The hostage situation. Yes, another essential piece of kit in Santa's arsenal is the naughty list. Evidently, it has some sort of proximity feature that shows us the names of every bag in the vicinity. From this, we know there's only six left, but we also have intel on them like prior misdeeds and general character information. I'm not saying we call their moms or anything, but leaving messages in the blood of their fallen comrades addressing them by name would probably be quite an effective psyop and might even cause them to lose their nerve in GTFO. Something simple like, Dear so-and-so, I know you're mean to dogs, and I'm going to cut your head off. Of course, given the Santa in this universe must spend the other 364 days of the year drinking thinner, he doesn't even take the dude's piece. Instead, all he thinks to grab is the walkie-talkie, which, yeah, it's a good idea, but come on. By now, you've almost certainly delivered enough annual Call of Duty releases to have at least a foggy grasp of modern firearms. All right, fine. The good news is that we finally have a way of communicating with the outside world, and there's even someone on the inside that can help us out. Can you hear me, Santa? Hello? Santa? Well, she's no Anna Grimsdotier, but she can still give us some idea of what's going on. At the very least, she can tell us how many bad guys are in the room with her and when they come in and out, so we know what to expect. Now, you're probably wondering how she got her hands on a radio in the first place. It turns out her dad was too lazy to take her to the mall this year, so he took the cheapest possible route and gave her a glorified baby monitor for her to share her wish list with Santa directly. Talk about dramatic irony. As for why the guards are fine with one of their hostages, visibly holding a portable radio, well, that's because they're all incredibly stupid. Seriously, just because she's a kid doesn't mean she won't accidentally tune in Solid Snake. For Christ's sake, at least take the batteries out. As for Santa, now that he has a radio, he decides to pull a John McClane and speak directly to Mr. Scrooge himself. I mean, they've already found one of the bodies and currently have him on surveillance camera, so it's not like he's losing the element of surprise here. But now they know he's listening in on their communications. We should have just stayed quiet quiet and tried to sponge up as much as we could. On the other hand, now's the perfect opportunity to leverage our morality-based omniscience to toy with them a bit, maybe broadcast some of their dirty laundry over the airwaves and stir things up a little. That said, a much better use of our radio would be to try and reach the authorities. Naturally, a small unit like this won't have much range, so we'll want to start walking towards town and look for any high points where we can scan for traffic and send out an SOS. Obviously, we won't know for sure whether we're actually communicating with the enemy. So, so, we'll want to keep moving between each transmission and try to get her message out across as many channels as possible. First things first, like I said before, Santa took some damage in that last bout with the baddies, and from what I know about Kringle Anatomy, he's going to need more than a few sugar cookies to fill in that health bar. We should check the guard shack to see if there's a first aid kit lying around. I'm definitely not a doctor, but from what I saw during the fight, his injuries are fairly superficial, so even as little as a roll of duct tape or tube of super glue would probably tie him over for the rest of the night. Regardless of what we use, the last thing we want to do is dress our wounds back in the mansion where one of the bad guys could stumble upon us at any second. Oh, well, at least we get to check out all his bad Celtic tattoos while he patches himself up with Christmas ornaments and what is that, wrapping paper? Look, I know you're Santa Claus and all, but you think maybe you're taking the holiday shtick a bit too far with that one? What's next, intravenous eggnog? Just tear off part of your shirt and use that. Meanwhile, on the other side of the 
house, Trudy manages to give her captors the slip and run off to the attic. Because apparently, maintaining control over a seven-year-old is more than a gang of hardened criminals can possibly imagine. And how do you think they address this situation? By sending a single member of their team to go look for her, of course. Never mind the fact that there's a festive vigilante out there hunting you down one by one. And speak of the devil, look who's back in action. Now would be a great opportunity for that Santa sack sneak attack I mentioned earlier. Nah, you're right, that'd never work. Better to just grab a length of dime store tinsel and go for the 47. Give me a break. You're honestly lucky that Santa statue gave you away and forced you to retreat before you actually went through with that nonsense. Unless that shit was made of paracord, best case scenario, it snaps the instant you put pressure on it and then she stabs you straight through the eye socket. As for her, I'm not sure why she wouldn't just shoot out his legs and slap a couple tourniquets on to keep him conscious through the interrogation. Let's be real, you're not actually going to let any of these people go. They've seen all of your faces and you've already smoked enough bodyguards and house staff to put your grandkids in jail. Anyone with a brain could tell you're just keeping them around to make sure you get what you want and then it's out with the silver plastic. Ultimately, it doesn't matter because the mark corners himself almost immediately, prompting Mr. Scrooge to demonstrate his novel breaching technique. <laughs> Jesus, and they say video games don't teach you anything valuable. With the loose end tied down, the crooks start pressing the big man for answers, but they're having trouble getting past the whole I'm literally Santa Claus thing. I can't imagine why. You realize no matter how many gift-wrapped ukuleles they pull out of that bag, there's no way they're ever going to believe you're for real, right? Might as well just tell them you're a deep cover agent for the Department of Labor here to investigate Gertrude for using Cub Scouts as bodyguards. Although, at this point, there's really nothing you could say to keep them from putting a bullet in your brain. Well, almost nothing. Just then, Kringle remembers the ace up his sleeve and uses his intimate knowledge of their childhoods to get under their skin, and just in time for a Christmas miracle to occur. Just kidding, it's actually Trudy dumping styrofoam into the ventilation system, but the ruse distracts them long enough for Santa to slip his restraints and zip up the chimney, and not a moment too soon. Bad guy number one nearly put a cap in his jolly ass. Finally, things are looking up. Oh, and what's this I see? Why, it's none other than Lightstone's famous Kill Squad, here to terminate the intruders with extreme prejudice. Now this is the kind of security detail I was talking about. Oh, there was no break-in, officer. And don't mind all these drums of hydrofluoric acid. They're purely medicinal. Just when it looks like we might be getting out of this mess, here comes Gertrude's smooth brain son-in-law to throw a wrench in the works. Turns out he was able to briefly incapacitate one of the trigger men before parkouring his way to freedom. It's too bad the other guy couldn't have gunned him down before he inevitably did something stupid that further jeopardized everyone else's lives. Can't wait to see how he screws this up. Played a lot of soldiers in my career. Can I just say, thank you for your service, Semper Fi. Huh, maybe these guys take their nickname a little too seriously. I guess that means the naughty list just got a whole lot longer. Kinda makes you wonder if Gertrude didn't replace Christmas bonuses with the Jelly of the Month Club. Whatever their motivation, these guys aren't screwing around, and it looks like they even brought a present for Santa. Surprise, it's an M240 Bravo. Just think, as you're forced to jump off a two-story building while racing a machine gun, you could have simply walked a few miles through the snow and made this someone else's problem. Now you're trapped inside a tool shed surrounded by a team of elite mercenaries about to get down on some real life ready or not. One thing's for sure, it's gonna take a lot more than Christmas cheer to get Santa out of this one. If he ever wants to see Mrs. Claus again, he's gonna have to think back to his days as Nickamon the Red. And what better way to channel your inner Viking warlord than by smashing a few dozen skulls with a sledgehammer? Yeah, I'm gonna have to retract my previous comments about these guys being elite or even remotely useful. I mean, either Gertrude found these guys in the same soldier a fortune bargain bin is her in-house team, or we're looking at the third string kill squad. Because this gang of airsoft LARPers could not clear a tiny home. Sure, I get Santa's had some kind of rapid onset spiritual renaissance that's brought him back to a time in his life when he wasn't just some bumbling altruistic drunk. But every single one of these losers is supposed to be a hardened killer, and not a single one manages to squeeze off a shot that's not directly into his own foot. Not to mention the morons that walk right past the giant 
giant wearing red and white before getting their brains knocked out. Unworthy opponents aside, Santa does straight up murder a dude using a sharpened candy cane, and I think every one of us would be lying if we said we haven't at least thought about something like that after whittling one down to a freaking ice pick. Gotta give him points for that one. As for the cannon fodder, I gotta wonder why they would even go in there in the first place. Their orders were to kill the man, not take him alive. So, they should have just propped the 240 on a snowmobile and filled that sh jack full of lead until the roof caved in. After that, just set the rest on fire and wait for the smell of melted cookies. I mean, for Christ's sake, they all had M67 frag grenades the entire time, and no one even thought to bust one out until he was already out of the building. Honestly, it's a good thing they were working with the bad guys, because if this is how they stack up against a single dude armed with hand tools, God knows Mr. Scrooge and company would have wiped the floor with them. That said, we aren't exactly dealing with the North Hollywood boys here. Turns out the robbers are still on the hunt for young Trudy, and unfortunately for them, she just watched Home Alone last night. Look at this little idiot. You know, booby traps don't work unless you hide them. Bro, you say that now, but you're about to have the worst day of your entire life. Gotta say, I'm not sure whether she watched the actual Home Alone or the video we made on it, because it's clear her traps are a bit more inspired than the real McAllister's. I mean, a framing nail through the chin? That's just poetry, especially once he falls back onto the welcome mat of death. Naturally, she couldn't have known Gingerbread would be stupid enough to let one of the bowling balls drive the point across, but given everything else she had in place, something would have crossed him off eventually. Seriously, it's nothing short of a miracle our femme fatale was able to make it to the end. After being repeatedly bludgeoned and partially scalped, you'd think she'd find this more trouble than it's worth. So what if some brat is up in the attic? There's no way she knows anything that'll get you inside the safe. And aside from fortifying one small part of the house, there's not a whole lot she could do to get in your way. Sure, she has the walkie-talkie, but given it's barely more than a toy, there's no way she'll be able to actually reach anyone that can help. Well, except for one person. Should have squeezed Trig when you had the chance. Like the saying goes, he who hesitates gets his chest caved in by Santa Claus. And that's not all. Better close your eyes, Trudy. Back downstairs, things are starting to heat up. Using the Kill Squad's key, McDuck finally gains access to the vault. Only it looks like his swan dive into cash will have to wait. And this upsets me. It upsets me in a way that makes me want to just randomly shoot at people. Sh and try watching that troll movie. However, before Scrooge can get this party started, Jason breaks down and admits he swiped the money sometime the night before. And to that, I gotta say BS, dude. You mean to tell me this manlet moved $300 million by himself in a single night? That's over three and a quarter tons of $100 bills. And this guy looks like he can barely lift up his purse. Also, it's cool that you're willing to take the aggro for your family right now. But Jesus Christ, man, you robbed your own mother on Christmas Eve. Santa's gonna give you an entire coal mine for that one. And sure enough, it turns out Jason wasn't lying about pulling the heist. He even had the nerve to stash it all in the nativity scene of all places. Unfortunately, what he failed to take into consideration is the very obvious fact that he and his family will be completely useless to the robbers once they have what they want, and that's bound to be bad for their health. Yeah, you probably should have lied and told them you already moved it somewhere off the property to buy your loved ones a little extra time while Scrooge's team followed up. Lucky for them, the one one inept guard that was left with him to do the deed couldn't just mag dump into them and get it over with. No, he had to make it some kind of ridiculous game, which of course gave them time to Bugs Bunny him into confusion before beating his ass to death with fireplace tools. You know, as a family. In what perfect timing. Here comes Santa Claus with Linda's small daughter to check out the man they just brutally killed. I'm joking, of course. Trudy's well beyond traumatizing at this point. She's probably gonna wind up one of those people that cleans up crime scenes for a living. That is is, assuming they make it out of here alive. Although given Santa's passing out H and K's for Christmas, I'd say that's becoming a lot more likely. Anybody know how to work these gizmos? I think so. I used to hunt with my dad. Ordinarily, I'd make some remark about how blasting quail with your dad doesn't really translate to shooting it out with mercenary commandos. But given what we've seen from these guys so far, I'd say it's probably harder. I mean, check it out for yourself. She doesn't do half bad. At the very least, she creates enough of a diversion for jolly old Saint Nick to come in and start 
bashing people to death with his hammer. That said, with the amount of unused firepower left to lying around the property, he could have armed Alva and Bertrude as well, along with, you know, himself. Altogether, they might have been able to pin Scrooge and his men down before they could run off with Grandma. But no, don't even bother trying to harness modern weaponry. Oh, I'm Santa Claus. I couldn't possibly figure out how to just use an assault rifle, but here, let me just hop onto a snowmobile and operate it perfectly. Spare me. You've had hundreds of years to figure out what a firearm is, and over 60 years for the AR platform alone. Better get with the program before word gets out about your existence and Hans Gruber shows up at the North Pole. Now, you wouldn't have to have an in-depth understanding of current weapons or vehicles to recognize an obvious trap when you see one. Why the hell? the big bad be standing out in the open, literally daring you to run him down, unless he was planning on turning the tables somehow. The only thing dumber than falling for that was Scrooge himself tricking Santa into crashing when he could have easily just shot him off the snowmobile and been done with it. I guess what I'm trying to say is, is that you're both idiots, and I really hope that this nightmare ends with both of you dying horribly. Unfortunately, I'm rarely that lucky, and with Sid the Sloth dumping literally all of his ammunition, blind firing into nothing, before launching into hand hand combat with a former Viking, I got a pretty good feeling I know exactly how this is gonna go. Whatever it takes, Christmas dies tonight. Guess again, Scrooge. This guy's got size, strength, and experience on you. And to top it all off, he's literally magic. Zero percent chance this ends without you getting snapped in half like a graham cracker. However, no amount of physicality or expertise will carry you if you can't actually stand up. And once on ice, Scrooge's crampons let him slap Santa around like a hockey puck. It almost makes all the difference. Almost. But wouldn't you know it, this little showdown is taking place in the remnants of an old cabin, and there's one key part that's still intact, which just so happens to be all our hero needs to wrap this one up. Damn. No! That's actually a brutal way to go. It's not over yet, as there's still one last member of the Kill Squad left alive, and it turns out he's one of the only ones capable of actually living up to that title. Yeah, you feel that white-hot burning sensation through your chest cavity? That's life's way of saying, welcome to the future. So, is there anyone that actually believes this guy who's had less than five minutes of total screen time is actually gonna execute Santa in cold blood and go on his merry way? If so, you're probably wondering why he's just standing there doing Doing nothing instead of just slapping the trigger five or six times and getting it over with. Spoiler alert, it's so Gertrude can come out of nowhere and get the drop on him at the last second. Shocker, I know. If you legitimately did not see that coming, then this next part's really gonna throw you for a loop, because Santa, he dies. That's right, sad Christmas, and right in front of Trudy too. Doesn't that just make you want to sob uncontrollably into your popcorn? Except wait, it seems everyone's going around saying how they believe this random dead guy, who as far as they know, because they they just got here, never did anything even remotely supernatural, is actually the real Santa Claus. That's right, grown adults were willing to admit out loud that this dude right here travels around the earth in a single night using a sleigh pulled by reindeer in order to deliver presents made by magical elves to hundreds of millions, if not billions, of people. And they're not just saying it either, they absolutely believe this. You know how I know this? Because the power of their collective belief causes them to shrug off four center mass gunshot wounds and and rise from the dead. Possibly as a zombie. Nope, not a zombie. He's just regular Santa Claus again, at least for now. And with that, it seems that Christmas at the Lightstone house was saved. Along with hundreds of millions of dollars, they got by siphoning aid money away from a failed state. Merry Christmas, everyone. In the end, Scrooge and all his helpers wound up on ice, and we didn't even lose anyone we cared about. That said, the big man could have easily had the SWAT team on the way before the kill squad arrived. And given how pathetic these goons were, it probably would not have gone well for them. Of course, once he decided to take matters into his own hands, making use of captured enemy equipment along with his own supernatural abilities would have given Santa a massive tactical advantage over the attackers. And for that reason, I think the Violent Knight was beaten. Moral of the story, be good, or Santa Claus will fuck kill you.